guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Thank you for joining me, guys. Today's going to be an amazing video. We're going to be doing a spotlight on Archmage Helmet, who is insane. This dude's a beast. He's only available in Doom Tower Normal vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Secret Room Champion Fragments. And man, I've been waiting for this video for so long. By the way, if you're watching this video live the day it goes live, happy Valentine's Day to you and your loved ones out there. Uh, man, this guy... Ooh, I'm excited for today's video, guys. I maxed him out last night. It was so tempting not to just immediately build him and just throw a video out like the hour after I got him. But instead, I gave myself a little bit of time to play this champion to get a feel for where he's best served inside the game and to just really, you know, just have some fun with him so I know what I'm talking about a little bit, right? So... Archmage Helmet, first of all, aesthetically, this dude looks amazing. He's got this, is that a skill tome? Is that a, is that a foreshadowing to skill tome farming? Okay, he has this book strapped to his belt. He has the dagger as well. He has these cool gauntlets, uh, a cape that looks like it weighs a million pounds. Aesthetically, they've been absolutely nailing all of these champions. He has the electricity kind of, I don't know, fusing through his, his armor here. Uh, at the top and he has this uh, awesome staff as well it looks like the uh, electricity emanates from this staff so a really really cool looking champion uh just a big fan of what they've been doing lately on that end skills uh arcane dyne uh dynamo excuse me attacks one enemy fills your champion's turn meter by 10 percent fills it by 20 percent instead if the attack is critical you're really going to want to build this champion with 100 percent crit rate we're going to fill out his masteries together on this champion so be right there with that uh, but, you know, crit rate for the A1 and crit rate for the A2 as well. A2 is time slip. On a three-turn cooldown, attacks one enemy, also attacks all other enemies if the first attack is critical. Okay, very important. Because each of those extra hits have a 75% chance when both are placing a stun debuff for one turn. After attacking, decrease turn meters of each enemy without a stun debuff by 20%. So... <clears throat> That 20% that after the stun, if you don't land a critical hit, for example, after he attacks, decrease the turn meter of each enemy without a stun. So if you don't land that crit for whatever reason, maybe it's an, uh, a bad affinity matchup, maybe you don't have 100% crit rate, whatever it may be, you still have a chance at decreasing turn meter even if you don't do the AoE attack. That's important to kind of notice about this uh, guy's kit because this is not predicated, this is after attacking decrease the turn meters of each enemy so it's not uh, you know based on that first attack which the stun is based off of okay now eight books on this uh this ability that sucks the good news is the rest of his uh kit is rather book friendly but man you really need that cooldown down to three turns so of course you're forced to throw eight books or whatever into the a2 on the a1 he has five levels which you know kind of sucks on the a3 though psychic guidance uh this is an insane ability. Increase speed, increase crit rate, and increase crit damage buff on all allies for two turns. That's insane. Speed, crit rate, and increase crit damage. There's no epic champion. There's only one champion inside the entire game that has ability anything like that. Uh, immune to turn meter de decreasing effects as well. So no books obviously need on that passive. Only two books on the psychic guidance, and they're both cooldowns. So, you know, can complain about the books here. Uh, definitely worth your books, by the way. <laughs> he's, he's, if you know, newsflash, he's really good. Uh, increased speed arena in, uh, excuse me, speed in arena battles by 17% on the aura. So, guys, why is he so good? First of all, he has a really, really, really high base speed at 108. So, that's exactly what we want to see from a champion like this. Uh, we want to see him fast, we want to see him with a lot of accuracy, and we want to see him with crit rate. That makes him a little bit more challenging to build because you're focused on three areas. Crit rate, accuracy, and speed on this champion. We'll talk about how to best do that in a minute here. Uh, but check it out, guys. It's like a mini tornado ability from a child. Uh, increase speed, increase crit damage on all allies for two turns. Uh, grants an extra turn, which is pretty OP. But it's the same kind of ability as Tornado minus the tr uh, Fear and True Fear. But really, this is the only ability in the game that has the, you know, the increased crit damage with the increased speed on a three-turn cooldown. Just uh, thought I would point that out to you guys. All right, so this guy's a beast. Even beyond that, because he has the AoE uh, stun that he brings to his kit. So great for CC uh, as well. So where the heck is he? Why am I so blind when it comes to finding these champions? Anyway, uh, really, really cool. Good arena champion, good dungeon champion, just good almost everywhere in the game. Uh, maybe not Fire Knight. 
So in terms of building this champ, like I said, kind of challenging to build. So what I would do if I were you guys is use your masteries as a way to supplement where you might be weak in his gear. Right, so for example, if you're struggling to get any damage out of this, first of all, not a damage dealer, right? He's an attack-based champion, and doesn't feel like he should be an attack-based champion. Feels like he should be a support-based champion. He has a very low base attack, I want to say around 930-ish. So, uh, you can go offense if you want to get a little bit extra damage out of this champion. You can go with Deadly Precision, you can go with Keen Strike, and you can end with War Master on this champ. I probably will end up going with that build uh, today. So I'm going to take a break, think about it, and, and come back to you guys. But I just wanted to point these out. You can also you can make a case for three different or more different uh, Tier 6 Masteries in different trees on this champion. On defense, you can definitely make a case for Fearsome Presence, like what, like I, how I have my Scylla the Drake set up, where you can bump that stun from a 75 to an 80% chance of landing vis-a-vis uh, -vis this Tier 6 Mastery. Now, it's a big trade-off. You're getting that 5% in Fearsome Presence, but you're sacrificing a lot of damage if you forego going down the offense tree and uh, War Master. So I personally go War Master on uh, Archmage Helmet. Now on defense, guys, you have some options as well, right? So you can go with Timely Intervention, increases champion's turn meter by 20% whenever an ally hero drops below 25% HP. I don't think that's the best bet for this champion because he's not like a healer slash reviver and that's usually where we see timely intervention used the most. However, he does come in clutch with all those stuns and all those buffs. So I would actually use Eagle Eye Mastery on this champion if you're hurting for accuracy, but I am going to recommend almost everybody use an accuracy banner on this champion. Uh, we'll talk about that in a sec. We'll talk about that now. Uh, let me just build his masteries real quick and I'll be right back. All right, guys, just want to point out a few of my favorite masteries here. We went with offense and defense. We went with War Master, just kind of hugged the left-hand side of the uh, offense tree. Uh, defense is a lot of masteries that suits this guy pretty well. I like the solidarity increase ally resist by five for each buff placed on them by this champion. And again here, guys, it's pretty cool because he's placing three buffs on a three turn cooldown so it's a nice little added bonus uh increasing the resist as well by 15 every single time he gets those off right and then we have a uh, cycle of revenge 50 percent chance of increasing the turn meter by 15 percent when an ally is attacked with a critical hit uh a nice again we're keeping this dude moving because he's already super fast let's take advantage of that and get more stuns off let's go ahead and get more buffs off retribution 50 percent chance to counterattack when this champion loses 25 percent of their max hp or more from a single enemy skill i love that because that counterattack synergizes so well with this a1 where if critical he's increasing his turn meter by 20 percent while doing that very very cool to kind of have that synergy on his kit that's why i chose to go with defense over support you can definitely make a strong case for support as well i mean you can go ahead and pick up uh, uh, not timely inter, not arcane, but uh, buh, 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 buh. rapid response. There we go. Uh, whenever a buff cast by this champion is removed or expires, has a 30% chance of increasing the turn meter by 10%. That's a really, really great uh, kind of move to have on this champion. And of course, you can pick up accuracy there as well. So it's really a tough choice when building this champion. You have a lot of options. I really like this one though, because again, I really do like retribution on this champion. If you can get away with not getting the accuracy from your support tree. In terms of artifacts on this champion, guys, we went with perception and two. Two speed sets uh again need for speed we're thinking speed as a number one priority mixed with accuracy we need accuracy to land the stuns you guys know the drill so i went with uh in terms of overall stats speed accuracy crit rate or crit rate speed accuracy <laughs> so they're all very important here his overall stats right now are 95 156 we have 376 on the accuracy so he is doom tower in arena viable if you're only using him for dungeons 200 is just fine 220 or so accuracy is just fine the traditional dungeons in this game uh for faction wars i'd like to see that faction wars 21 around like two 230 240 and then for doom tower as it scales for arena you you know 376 is just fine right it, you just get as high as possible essentially uh when you talk about arena so 249 speed is going to be a priority defense 3100 hp 3400 the thing is the guys and we're going to talk about this right now in terms of not just this champion right but when you're thinking about building any support champion on your account uh the gauntlets are a big opportunity spot for you and it's really should be predicated on what you need on what's happening with your team what's happening with your champion just watching a youtube video or copying it from a website is not going to be enough context for you guys so think about it this way it's really easy rule of thumb super obvious a support champion is he dying 
is he or she dying? Is he or she, uh, is the team around them dying, right? Are they a healer and they're dying? Is there a problem going on? Do you not have 100% win rate? If that is the case, then put defense or put uh, HP percentage on those support champions gauntlets. Is everybody staying alive? Is everybody staying alive and your runs could just be better optimized? Then go crit rate on your support champions on the gauntlets, okay? So this guy is different. We need the crit rate no matter what because we want to land those stuns. But, you know, as a general rule of thumb, like a Relicary Tender, an Apothecary, these type of champions, when you're thinking about building them out, if everybody's staying alive any anyway, right, then why add more defense to those champions? Why add more HP? Just give them a little bit of crit rate, give them a little bit heavier of a punch on their A1s, whatever, their counterattacks, whatever they may have, and you'll actually like the results better that way because your team will still stay alive, likely, and you'll just be putting out a little bit more damage. So anyway, crit rate, uh, <laughs> tangent away. Let's get back to the video. So uh, crit rate, awesome on the, uh, the the gauntlets here. Pretty much mandatory unless you want to go nuke, but there's no reason to go crit damage on this champion's gauntlets because he's not doing enough damage to justify that in my opinion uh defense on the chest is just fine hp is also fine on the chest uh his damage is based on attack which is doesn't feel right on this champion but it is what it is we have great speed boots here as well uh with accuracy sub roll amazing 50 accuracy on these boots a quad i didn't even realize i had a quad roll on my entire account Turns out I have one. Uh, we have uh, speed on the helmet. We have uh, perception, which is a great set for this champion as well. Get some speed and also get some accuracy, right, in one set. So perception, if you guys can farm it from, uh, from the forge, is going to be a great option as well. So that's how I have them built out, guys. I do have crit damage on the amulet because I got a double roll on the accuracy. You have a flex spot, same like we talked about with the gauntlets. If he's dying, put him in HP. Put him in defense. If he's not dying, yeah, put him in crit damage. Uh, again, we have attack on the ring only because we got a double roll on defense. So that was really solid as well. Get a little bit extra attack and also get some defense uh, in the uh, in the mix. We also have accuracy on the banner. Again, I talked about this. If I was only using him for dungeons and that's all I cared about, like Ice Golem, Spider, uh, Dragon Slayer, whatever, then I would probably put him in, you know, attack or something instead because I already have enough accuracy built on him anyway. But I should say, I think the majority of you guys are going to want to go accuracy on the banner. Look for speed as a substat. I prioritize when building this champion not necessarily accuracy because i knew i was going to put a banner on him but really speed substats i looked for speed on every piece of gear that i have on this champion i really couldn't find any crit rate speed uh but you know i just looked for speed everywhere because i want this guy fast 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 all right let's shut up and stop talking about this dude let's see this dude in action ash all right so let's start with uh spider's den dude oh man people who use mashal in spider's den can just i mean or, or people who don't have michelle but want to get that same synergy this is a spot that i usually use michelle in right so i put him in for michelle this is my main spider team i'll take venus out guys it's not even a matter of uh flexing pay to win like, i'll leave her in for one run and then i'll swap it out to a more free to play friendly team well i guess you guys get the point right <laughs> the, the takeaway here is pairing a max hp champion with a in increased crit damage buff champion especially on a three turn cooldown is dramatic the amount of damage because that's 30 percent increased crit damage on champions that are doing millions of damage already because it's based on enemy max hp so he's a game changer for spiders i have to point that out first and foremost you have a debuffer and then you stack armagers you stack cold hearts you stack royal guards they're gonna do an insane amount of damage because they have that increased crit damage i could sit here and waste 20 minutes of your time showing you a million spider runs the takeaway is you pair him with whatever team you have and that increased crit damage with the increased speed and the increased crit rate it allows you a lot of luxury here you can build your champions with a little bit lower crit uh, rate if you want to if you have a specific team you want to build around him but more importantly that crit damage and crit speed is amazing on the first crit speed huh what eh? crit damage plus speed is an amazing uh buff to have inside spider and then on his very next turn he's coming back around and he's stunning all the spiderlings that is a truly fantastic kit for spiders guys all right let's move it along here uh let's go to uh ba -ba 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 -ba. let's go to ice golem actually psych gonna go to arena I want to show, he's amazing in the arena as well guys so we have him just kind of on this you know standard team we have a speed booster we have a debuffer we have a nuker and we have him 
And again, he's immune to turn meter uh, effects. So Bat Swarm by Nethril, uh, whatever the name of Razin's A3 Bog Walker or something like that, uh, whatever these abilities are called, any of these term Warlord, any of these turn meter depleters, don't even have to worry about him. He's immune. Uh, so he's going to come in right now. We can start with increased speed, increased crit rate, increased crit damage. And I just have to say, he has great synergy with Arbiter. You build him second fast next to Arbiter, and what he's going to do is, uh, you know, add the ability that Lysandra has, for example, that Arbiter lacks, and that's the amazing turn meter boost, but not the increased speed. So you have him go next, and you have a decision to make here. Do I want to go ahead and stun all the enemies? Or do I want to go ahead and put increased speed, increased crit rate, increased crit damage on all my allies? I think Psychic Guidance is probably the way to go, and I think that's what he's going to auto into. We'll just check. Yeah, he'll auto into that ability, but it's also not too bad to have his second go-round, if it loops back to him, to stun everybody, right? He's going to be a tremendous arena champion as well, and that's why I'm so excited about the. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> See how we do here. We need Trick or Treats to come in huge for us here. On the next okay we're, we're fine we're fine uh but you know and he's also lending even though he's not doing a ton of damage and we'll see his damage in ice golem in just a second here guys but he's lending uh his damage in arena is actually important right because it's an aoe attack that helps out your team and every little ounce of damage it goes a long way in the arena compared to dungeons at least in my opinion let's go ahead and watch him again here against another team Let's see. Uh, this should be a pretty easy team. I want to see his A2 hit, though. So I'm going to start with his A2. I'm going to keep it on auto. So we get the boost. And we just... Obviously, it's really important that we attack a... Uh, we go against, if, if at all possible, against a spirit affinity. Or at least not against a force affinity on his first hit. Because remember, it has to be critical. So boom. And then we get... Look at that. Two stuns landed. Not too bad, right? I mean tremendous ability to have inside the arena and i didn't even see how much damage he did but we'll see in a minute here but man i really am excited about this guy it's the whole reason you guys know that i don't borrow other people's accounts here on the channel to do champion guides nothing against those who do i just don't feel comfortable logging into other people's accounts so i had a big decision to make this month do i go doom tower hard or doom tower normal do i do a guide on thea the tomb angel or do i do a guide on archmage helmet I decided to go on Archmage Helmet because I was so enthusiastic about this champion and I knew more of you guys would actually have him uh, compared to clearing 10 secret rooms in Doom Tower Hard. Uh, so I'm really happy I did, honestly. All right, let's go ahead and show you an Ice Golem run here, guys. And after this, I think you guys kind of get the point, right? So we have Stagnite as a debuffer. We have Sil the Drakes, two AoE stun champions on the same team. Awesome. Dark El Hain is going to be the secondary star of this video, and Relic Tender as our support champion. Unfortunately, we don't have an aura in this group. So here we go. I can't wait till I get this dude on my free-to-play, guys, because it's just going to be so amazing, right? I mean, he's going to change my game everywhere, pretty much. Uh, not only to increase speed on three-turn cooldown, but just having the stunt is going to be so helpful. Like, he's just such a crucial CC champion inside this game. So you can see, I'm, I'm, I want to see his A. Okay, there he is right there. So we landed, what, one, two, three stuns off those Terror Beasts. And I didn't even, again, I, I missed how much damage he did. What I'm going to do on his next AoE attack, guys, is I will go ahead and Dark Elhane dies uh, from, the, uh, from the reflect damage. Uh, it's okay. We have two revivers on the team. So the Drakes and Relicry Tender. So death should not be an issue. So he's doing... That was his AoE, right? Yeah, it was. So he's doing around, I don't know, 15 to 20k in the in the build that we have right now of damage. It's not insane damage, but it does add up over the duration of a battle. And you guys will see at the end screen here how much damage he puts out overall. I would venture a guess he's probably going to be like third in damage. Stagnite can actually put out a decent amount of damage in his own right. Dark Elhane is definitely going to be number one. It's just going to be a battle of him versus Silva Drakes, in my opinion, but we will see. But really, he's not about damage. If you're looking at this guy as a nuker just because you see the attack on his kit, that's not the case. He is a CC champion. He is a support champion. He's a great buffer to have uh, on your team. So again, we're stunning those two minions, those two guards of the Ice Golem, pretty consistently here, having two AoE stunners on the team. The only downfall there is, as you see right there, right? Sometimes you're just gonna get the double stun. The nice thing about that is, is against bosses that are immune to stun like Ice Golem, 
but aren't immune to turn meter depletion, that's key, right? It's going to help against bosses, and it's not going to do the stun against the bosses, obviously, but you still get that turn meter depletion. Adds even more versatility to his kit. He's good against bosses compared to, you know, Scylla the Drakes, who's fantastic as a support champion against anybody. It doesn't matter who she's facing, but she doesn't have that added utility to her stun. Uh, really nice to have that uh, turn meter depletion of 20%. That way his A2, you know, becomes really useful as well against bosses. Uh, so his A2 mixed with War Master makes him a real beast against bosses. And you can see this is a pretty easy run here, right? I mean, our damage, it, the cadence of our damage output is nice and steady, meaning that it's not coming in one, you know, you put in a Royal Guard sometimes and you're in trouble in, in Ice Golem because you're doing too much damage and the minions are both alive. He ignores 100% of defense and you're toast. This, not the case. Nice, nice steady flow of damage output here. And even if somebody dies, uh, we can go ahead and pick them back up. So here we go. Almost over. One more hit or two. And Ice Golem dead in under three minutes. Not too bad. In terms of the damage, we have 892 from Silva Drake's 1.2 million from both Stagnite and from Archmage Helmet. Archmage so close to being number two in line behind Stagnite there. So, hey, 1.2 million damage, all jokes aside, is a tremendous damage output from a CC support champion added to your team. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this guide on Archmage Helmet. He can help you out everywhere from Doom Tower uh, to Dragon's Lair, all the places that we didn't show in this video. We'd be here forever if we showed everywhere, but certainly Spiders, certainly Arena, fantastic champion congratulations if you were able to fuse him from doom tower thank you so much for watching this video and as always trash take care guys